Pitbulls bite. Pitbulls kill children. Pitbulls kill old ladies. Pitbulls are attacking people all over the world, east coast to west coast. That's what you see on the news. And in fact, is some of those dogs that people call pitbulls are doing exactly that. It's not a mystery. It's actually the truth. The difference between a chihuahua hurting someone and the so-called pitbull dogs killing someone is or biting something is the capacity of the bite, the power of the bite, and how relentless one of these big monsters could be when attacking somebody. Now we are going to digest, we are going to actually audit to this information. Because knowing the truth is the most important part. You're going to get the opinion of a lot of different people all over the place. Some of them are going to be university professors. Some of them are going to be reporters. Some of them are going to be very passionate people with good intentions that hate the pit bulls. Some of them are going to be pet owners that call their dogs pit bulls. They are going to be on the other side saying our dogs are angels. Some you're going to get some people that are going to say that dog fighters make the dogs kill people. You're going to get all kinds of information. But for the first time ever in history, you get to hear one of the creators of the American Pit Bull Terrier. My name is Chico Lopez and I'm a creator of American Pit Bull Terrier. I have been in the breed for 33 years. And I think that you should do the same thing every time you ask anybody. Are you talking to or you're listening to a desk person that read a book and is passing information that they only heard? Or you're talking to someone that actually work in the development of the real American Pitbull Terrier? Pay attention that I say real. Merits, quality of dogs, legendary dogs, flagship dogs is part of my pedigree as a person, as a real dogman. And I keep using the word real because when I say real, that means I'm implying that if there is real, they got to be fake. What you guys don't understand is that back in the 1800s, uh, the dogs of the 1800s, the dogs of the 1700s, they all come in a lineage of dogs that were becoming better and better and better. It was a controlled kind of like just to imagine evolution process where the dogs were getting better and better in most cases because the practice was the best male to the best female create the best puppies. Those men that brought some of those dogs to America from the old continent, they didn't bring those dogs uh, separate in a different boat because they were savages killers. They understood these were family dogs in many cases. They didn't have the, the urban thug hanging around with the dogs in the corner and the drug dealer. That were, those were not the men that were building the breed. Those men that were making some selections and making some ideas and the ideas kept were morphing and adjusting each, each other by different regulations that were created on the development of these dogs, whether it was in the ring of dog fighting. And yes, I said it, dog fighting, there was dog combat. Now you must understand this, the times were different. The men were different. Those men were very, very alpha males. Uh, most of the people that owned the dogs were not beta males. Uh, these men didn't want to know about wearing earrings, uh, maybe having long hair, uh, maybe having painted nails, and maybe thinking about whether they want to be boys or girls instead of being just machos and men. There was a different time. You must respect that. You don't have the right coming in from the future and judging something that was done in times that you didn't even exist. Your father, your grandfather didn't even exist. Those men living in America that was open range and America needed to have dogs that protect them from strangers that will try to come hurt him and stuff like that. Americans pay attention to one particular fact that was already in the process of discovery in the old continent where the best dogs, pay attention to what I'm gonna tell you right now. The best dogs were actually the nicer pets. The Americans understood that the more they had a dog that was a non-man biter, it was a better dog fighter. Let me put it to you this way. Think about Hoyce Gracie. He does not look for fights, but he can destroy someone that is twice his size, more powerful. He has done it. He's the first champion of the UFC. Actually, he owns one of my dogs. And so when you look at these type of men, they do not look for trouble, but when trouble comes to them, trouble gets smashed. 
That's exactly the same application that was discovered by these men back in the 1800s. So they understood that there was a process of epigenetics where the genetics could be morphed by the actions of people, but there were also genetics that fell into the hands at the very beginning before the epigenetics was constructed. And it's a circle that goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Every man has a contribution to the development of those dogs when you take that genetics. And so they understood that the process of being inside the fighting box, the, the pit is a skull, and that particular box, those dogs could not turn around and bite that man. It was important to have that loyalty, that connection. And those dogs will go through a three or four months con uh, training regime where they rest and they sleep with the master. And that created a powerful connection because when the dog was going to that particular stressful situation of going against an opponent, same way, maybe better than them, they had to show gameness. So it created a dog that needed to have the perfect biomechanics to have an advantage, the perfect uh, genetics to have the gameness and never give up. These dogs created a concept that America enjoys so much. While these children were having these dogs as nanny dogs, they'll come back from being hurt. They'll go into the living room and sleep with the children and being, being with the children. And the dogs were loved. And the dogs will go even further for these men. So it was a process that today society don't know. And you're listening from me and you're learning this right now. He created dogs that were like having a tabletop that has two different columns. One was the biomechanics of the dog, the gameness, the relentlessness, the power of the dog, everything else. And the other one was a communication. Chris Cyborg says, Guru Dada. It means like a glue. The dog becomes a glue to you. The dog is a pet. Her name is Holly and is a dog and Canelo. That's her pet. They are grudados to her. They are like, a, she said, a chiclete, which means the gum stuck to you. They love you. The connection is different. When you look at the dog in the eyes, there is a connection with a strong, powerful human being. So alpha male women and alpha male men receive a shot of this greatness through the genetics of those dogs. Those dogs today are only pets, absolutely only pets. The very best of the past today are only pets. But you can't confuse these dogs with who was developed, especially back in the 1980s, was developed separately away from the battle dogs of the 40s, the 30s, the, the 50s. Not by the UKC dogs, because the registrations did not create dogs. The, the men that created dogs were actually real dogmen. Not those guys that call dogmen today, those are just pretenders. Not the kennels, not the breeders, but the real men that actually had a brand because they make breeding decisions. It's like somebody when he's building a car, Mercedes-Benz or Ferrari or Lamborghini, they are making a, uh, engineering decisions while the breeder also make breeding decisions. For those, you gotta have choices of dogs. You gotta select the best out of among. The real framework of the American Pitbull Terrier is the best dogs are the breed, which means the other dogs that are not the best don't get to breed. That's why the breed of American Pitbull Terrier is so different than everything else. So when you come and say dogs that bite, are not those game dogs that have the real name of American Pitbull Terrier, AKA Pitbulls. Before 1985, they were called Pitbulls. And they were known, especially because the ones that were, the, what, what I call the street Pitbulls, were the dogs that lick from, let's say, somebody that had great dogs and had a little puppies and maybe gave his cousin or his uh, son a dog. And that person had a dog that, you know, bred it as a pet, which is one of the worst things that can happen to all breeds when these pet owners decide to become breeders and some of them decide to make a profit, hustlers that want to breed dogs, backyard breeders. Later on, they call themselves kennels. Today, they got websites and, and stuff like that to sell dogs. Those same hooligans are the ones that started breeding the bullies, which is a deformation and mutation of the American Pebble Terrier back in 1985. Some guy called Dave Wilson and some of the guys started messing around breeding dogs for the size of the head and the size of the dog. The American Pebble Terrier is a 35 to 60 pound dog male, most likely a 47, 50 pounds of proper dog. And when you're looking at these animals, when you're looking at these dogs, when they're coming from the great men, these dogs have zero, zero, and I mean it, zero intentions to hurt somebody, even when the person might, you know, push them. 
to, to, to turn around. I mean, you can feed them with your hand raw meat and they can eat it and you can just put your hand right in their mouth and retrieve it out of their mouth without previous training and they'll do that because the loyalty is that big. The dogs that are willing to give their life for them. Don't confuse. Those are not the dogs. Those are the dogs with the real name. But then in 1985, they started breeding these much. They started crossing them into uh, other breeds, Dogo Argentino, the Mastiffs, these, that, the American Bulldog, looking for size. It became a trend among the ignorant and the most uh, naive and, and, and just the fashion breeding by size of the head, the size of the, the, how do you call it, the legs and so on and so forth. And these deformations kept on growing, kept on growing. And then those guys started breeding different animals. Netflix with the so-called giant pit bull is one of the biggest jokes and lies in, in dog history. That, that dog might be a nice dog, might be a good pet even, but that's not a real pit bull. Using the name pit bull on that dog is absolutely taking clout. But the people that actually were the leaders of the American Pit Bull Terrier, including the registrations, that were making profits of registering puppies and whatever, whoever was a, a breeder, a respected leader, there was no leadership really. The, even a singer, Cuban singer, which I like his music, by the way, I think he's a brilliant guy. He took the name. He took the name and called himself Pitbull and blew out the water. By When you have the word Pitbull, means never give up. Do you know that the American Pitbull Terrier gave America a gift with the concept of never give up? Do you know that? Have you ever heard a word called underdog? And they say Terrence Crawford will be the underdog on this fight. And Terrence Crawford wins. And then he becomes a top dog. Those words came from Battle of Dogs, two pit bulls back in the 1800s. So the dog that was at the bottom fighting, people might think he's losing, but someone will say that dog at the heart, he will not quit. He can win. I bet he won't quit. So I'm betting $100, $50, whatever it was they'll do on the underdog. And so the word underdog came that you could be facing adversity and you will not quit. You have a chance to win because you got the heart. That is embedded in American corporations, that is embedded in American football teams, soccer teams, basketball teams, the guy that wants, the guy that came from the ghetto, the guy that came from the barrio, and the guy that came from the uh, uh, trailer park and he wants to go forward in life, he's the underdog. But when that underdog thinks like a top dog, and do the proper things, he becomes the top dog. Now, being on the top is difficult because competition is very stiff. So being a top dog and staying a top dog are two different things. These concepts are owed to the American Pebble Terrier. But they want to feminize men. And so by feminizing men, they took away the dog that belongs to the American Pebble Terrier. Now you see these guys walking with these Frenchies. Do you know that the American Pebble Terrier birth was birth? with miners, coal miners that were bare knuckle fighters. And then later on back in the old country, in the, in the old continent, they became also boxers under the uh, Queensberry rules. And the first heavyweight champion of the world, John Sullivan, John L. Sullivan, he was an advocate and a breeder of American Pebble Terry and he used to fight some dogs too. And so it was Jack Johnson, the first black uh, Afro-American uh, uh, tremendous legend in America. And so was Jack Dempsey. And today, some of the amazing boxers have them as pets. Saul Canelo Alvarez, Terrence Buck Crawford, Julio Cesar Chavez, Mano de Pia Duran. Those guys got my dogs as pets. Those are the real dogs, the real game dogs. Now, people call game dogs anything, and people call people anything, and people call uh, uh, real anything. I, I developed this real uh, uh, people, real American people terrier concept between 2010 and 2012, looking at the disaster that was happening to the breed. So when you hear those dogs on the news that talk about a pit bull be somebody, I guarantee you it's not a real pit bull. It's a mutt they call pit bulls. And people buy these dogs and breed them and keep calling them pit bulls. How could it be a breed when you have dogs of every color, polka dot, pink, whatever it is, Meryl color, total disaster. But when you don't know what beauty is, you can have crap being fed to you on a spoon and you eat it because you don't know what quality it is. Those are not real American people terriers. And the first dog that I ever had 
was a street level pit bull and make me love the breed. So whenever you say, I got a, a real dog, it's a good dog, just like you're saying, well, let me just tell you this, sweetheart. That dog right there that you love so much, that's been good to you and you have 30 to 40 years having those type of dogs, those are descendants of the real deal. They have sparkles of greatness from the great dogs. And those that are biting and hurting people, they have sparkles of bad breeding decisions, poor genetics, poor uh, individuals that shouldn't be bred. The, the so-called dog fighters, which are not real dogmen, uh, were breeding dogs that bite people for profits and making some glory as some men biters. Yes, they did. Those guys were IQ maybe 75. They were professional dog fighters that were not professional dogmen. It's a big difference there. The real dogman cares about the breed, preserving the very best of the best as much as possible. The dog fighter cares about making a profit on the dogs and enjoying it and maybe having a status. I want you to learn that the dogs that are biting and killing people today are not real pit bulls. So all these laws that are made against those dogs are being made using the name of American Pit Bull Terrier. It would be like someone taking your ID, taking your face, taking your name, committing a crime and saying, people saying that it was you to commit the crime, but it wasn't you, you're innocent. The real American Pit Bull Terrier is innocent. And who is at the heart of fault on this? The old timers that sold dogs to any turkey for a dollar and told them you're gonna be a dog man if you buy more dogs from me. Those guys were the first line of fault. And then second, all these neighborhood backyard breeders and all these good pet owners that say they want to see children of their dogs and they cannot keep all the dogs for themselves, give them away, the dogs end up in the shelters. And the shelters are full of dogs. They call them pit bulls. They are pit bull type. Looks like a pit bull or looks like your personal idea of a pit bull because to me, they don't even look like pit bull types. They're a certain look of a great dog. So I hope that this brings light to you. I hope this brings knowledge to you, or at least bring a perspective so you can have a very good idea of what is a real American Pit Bull Terrier. And if you want to point fingers to someone, point fingers to those fake dogs, like the one in Netflix, like the one in uh, 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 those guys have it. Take a look at Caesar Milan. He keeps talking about Pit Bulls, he never touch a real Pit Bull. All he has is blues. Those are not real Pit Bulls, that's a shame. You're supposed to at least know that those are fake dogs. The truth is right here. You heard it right now. And I hope that you can share this message to enlighten the new generations. Because people that were born in 1990s, the mid-1990s, later 1990s, they just did not have a chance even to see the street-level pit bulls. Let me explain to you why. The reason why they couldn't see a real-level pit bull was because the dogs like the first one that I got back in the 90s, those breeders... They started to breed the blue dogs, the fake pit bulls, because profit was not available on dogs. The first dog that I ever had, I paid $40 for it. And it was a good dog, I was, it's one in a billion, okay? But I was looking for the greatest dogs ever in history. I found them, I took them to the next levels, I developed them, I created them, and I'm very happy, I feel very blessed. My life mission is accomplished. I want you to know this, God is great, God loves you, respect the law, Love your dogs. If you have a dog that you thought it was a pit bull, that was a real American pit bull terrier and he's not, and he's a good dog, love the dog. Don't breed it. Don't be part of the cancer. Be part of the solution. And when you want to know about the real American pit bull terrier, you can always find it at chicolopez.com. You can study and become someone that actually is enlightened. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.